Hey guys, what's going on? Wayne Grayson, Editor-in-Chief of 4 Construction Pros here at the John Deere booth for Utility Expo 2021. And we've got a pretty big announcement from this show to talk about. Now, as you can see, sitting behind me is a Deere 310 backhoe, but it's not just any 310 backhoe. Nope, this is the 310 exterior, a battery electric prototype that John Deere has unveiled to the public for the first time at this show. You know, Deere actually announced development of this machine back in January of this year, January January 2021, but Utility Expo is the first time anyone has had a chance to see and hear this extremely quiet backhoe up close. It's also the first time that we've seen this model name, 310 X. Now, the X is the highest tier in Deere's new performance tiering naming system that it brought out for its machines earlier this year. The X is used to denote hybrid and electric machines, and it represents Deere's latest and greatest technology and kind of creature comforts equipped on a machine. Now, apart from the fact that there is a battery in this machine, kind of the other interesting aspect of the development of this prototype is that to prove it out, Deere has actually partnered with National Grid, which serves about 20 million customers with electric service. And the northeastern part of the country. They're one of the largest utilities in the United States. Which makes the Utility Expo a natural fit for this machine's debut. And I should reiterate what I said at the top of this video. As of right now, the 310X is just a prototype. However, the machine on display at Utility Expo is the prototype. This is the machine that made its way onto several national grid job sites throughout the spring and summer of this year for testing. But why did Deere choose a backhoe for its first battery powered machine? After all, we've seen other companies such as Volvo and Komatsu opt for excavators in terms of developing battery powered technology for construction equipment. And specifically, why the 310 model of backhoes? Well, it all goes back to this partnership with National Grid. See, the 310X was basically National Grid's idea to begin with. National Grid actually approached us here uh, a few years ago to uh, because they had sustainability goals that they have to reach and that they put in place uh, for 2030. And so they're looking at not only their on-road fleet, but also their off-road equipment fleet. And so backhoes is important for them of what they do for their on their job sites. National Grid has a particular fondness for the 310 model. After all, as a natural gas and electric provider, National Grid is mostly performing shallow trenching. And that makes the 310's 14 feet of dig depth, plus its self-transportability and 25 mile per hour of top speed, a perfect solution for most of its job sites. So Deere has essentially taken a 310, a current but established tractor design. They've removed the 310's exhaust stack and engine and they've thrown a battery array under the hood. Now to do that Deere has worked with a few different suppliers in sourcing the battery technology at the heart of this machine. However, they aren't yet making public just who those suppliers are. Now Deere says the 310 XT is actually designed to be on par in terms of performance, power, capability, etc. with its sibling the 310L, the diesel power version. The 310L is a 100 horsepower machine with 14 feet of max dig depth, 9,300 pound-feet of bucket breakout, and 28 gallons per minute of hydraulic flow. And so far, it looks like the 310X has been able to match the 310L's capability pretty closely. National grid operators have actually told Deere that the battery-powered X-tier controls, operates, and performs pretty much identically to its diesel-powered version after they operated the machine in the field. We try to get this uh, uh, much corner conditions and the bearing conditions of what, uh, what the Northeast is, has offered offered with, with National Grid, truck loading, trenching, self-transport, stockpiling, all the different applications, what customers use uh, typically a backhoe uh, to do today. We wanted, to, and, and including uh, attachment use, so front end MP bucket, hammer, uh, breaker use. And so we're trying to get all those different type of applications and uh, to get that as a, as a composite for, for the testing uh, testing data. Now, I know one of the biggest questions from contractors and operators when it comes to electric machines like this backhoe is not necessarily power and torque. They know that electric machines and, and battery power machines can get power to the ground quickly. Rather, the question is usually around runtime. Just how long is this machine gonna work in the field doing a regular job before I have to stop and charge it up? And Deere knows that, and that's why they told me during this visit at the show that they're actually seeing the development of the 310 X tier as more of a years long process than than actually being in the home stretch and releasing this in the next you know 12 months or so and that's because they want to make sure that they get the runtime of this machine 
just right. They're actually, you know, aiming for an eight to 10 hour runtime before needing to charge this machine up. And that should put a lot more customers at ease whenever they're trying to make the decision of whether or not they want to invest in this machine. Now, just as Deere isn't ready to detail who they're working with on the battery side, they also tell me it's too early to give specifics on the battery array itself inside the machine. So as of right now, we don't know the actual capacity, rating, or runtime of the battery at the heart of this machine. We just know that it isn't yet at that eight to 10 hours of runtime target that Deere has set for itself. Eight to 10 hour composite runtime. We've heard that with many other customer interactions and, and interviews and along with National Grid that that's, that's really gonna be a minimum uh, to target. Um, we think there's upside potential from that. Um, but uh, in, until we get to that point, we're, we're, we've got uh, quite a bit of journey and a road ahead of us. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that when slash if the 310X does come to market, it might not be this exact design that gets produced. So as Deere makes tweaks and changes components with the aim of hitting that runtime target, the resulting machine could veer further away from the 310L design that it is heavily founded on. Now, we were talking about battery technology and not knowing the specs or capacity of the battery array at the heart of this backhoe, but, but battery is really only half of the runtime equation, right? Charging is the other half and, and how easy and how quickly this machine can charge. Now, we don't really have any specifics on the charging apparatus for this machine either in terms of how quickly it charges, you know, in between the battery being depleted. But to that end, Deere is testing multiple methods of power delivery, and that includes a fast charging system and mobile quick chargers. You can think of these mobile quick chargers as kind of big versions of those battery packs that we charge our phones with. But in this case, you'd be topping up a backhoe with it. And the reason that the phone battery pack is such an apt analogy for these mobile charging systems that you know companies like Deere are envisioning is that they would essentially work the same way. You would charge them up at the office, you would load them up onto a truck and transport them to the job site. And essentially, it would allow you to have the same type of system to where you're transporting diesel uh, to your machines on the job site now and filling them up there, you would be able to transport battery power to your machines as well. Of course, removing an engine from a machine packs more than just the benefit of eliminating emissions from burning fuel. There's also noise and cost to consider. Now, on the noise front, the battery-powered 310X is anywhere from 20 to 25% quieter than the diesel-powered 310L. Take a listen to just how quiet this machine is. Now, not only is that quieter machine easier on the operator's ears, it also means you can work at times or in places that a louder machine wouldn't be welcome, such as confined spaces, urban job sites, or sites near schools and hospitals. Now, beyond fuel and noise emissions, the other big reason to consider the 310X, should it come to market, is the savings with respect to cost of ownership, as an electric machine is much easier to maintain than one with an internal combustion engine. The total cost of operation will, will improve overall. Uh, there, we are having also a set of uh, targets for a return on investment that we're, we're still continuing to hone as we go through the uh, development and testing process. But overall, if you can imagine, you know, when, re when you remove the, the, the diesel-powered engine, you don't have um, all the systems that go along with it, all that different after treatments, uh, external after treatments. You know, the dock, the uh, SCR, EGR, or anything else that's that would help. Uh, uh, attain final tier four emissions compliance. Then also, uh, just with it, the, your largest uh, variable cost that goes in the machine per month is fuel, right, outside of your labor. So that, that's also removed. Um, 
then all your components, your maintenance items, you know, you're not changing engine, uh, engine fluids, you're not changing filters, uh, all the other uh, service points uh, you can imagine go away when you put in the, the battery electric system. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this look here at the 310 X-Tier battery electric prototype backhoe here at the Utility Expo from the John Deere booth. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, if you're watching here on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're getting up-to-date alerts whenever we drop new videos to this channel. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on all of our social media channels. Hopefully we answered all your questions here, but if not, drop us a line and we'll try to get those questions answered for you. Thanks again for watching. We always appreciate the time. We'll see you in the next one.